Hi guys, welcome back. Let us start with chapter 5, strategy implementation and evaluation. Okay, case study is based on uh, this particular chapter, which is the last episode in the series. Okay, so Kavipriya, can you read question number 1, please? Yes, sir. Yep. Ramesh is owner of popular brand of breeds, Yashpal. His son, after completing chartered accountancy, started assisting his father in running his business. The approaches followed by father and son in management were very different. While mm -hmm. Ramesh preferred to use authority and having a formal system of defining goals and motivation with explicit rewards and punishment, Yashpal believed in involving employees and generating enthusiasm to inspire people to deliver in the organization. Discuss the difference in leadership style of father and son. So, can someone identify and tell me what the question is all about? Can someone identify and tell me what the question is all about? Excellent. Very good. It is about leadership style. Okay. So, in strategy implementation, there are three things to be studied. Okay. One is leadership. Second one is, second one is organization structure. Third one is organization culture. In strategy implementation, there are three things required. One is leadership, one is organization structure, one is culture. In leadership, we have so many types of leadership, so many styles of leadership. There, there are maybe 10, 15 different styles of leadership. The best leadership style is something called as situational leadership situational leadership style that means based on situation what you are supposed to do but traditionally theoretically there are two different leadership styles even uh, included in ICI syllabus there are two different leadership styles one is transactional leadership style second one is transformational leadership style one is transactional leadership style another one is transformational leadership style okay now in transaction leadership style it follows a kind of carrot and stick approach it follows a type of carrot and stick approach what is carrot and stick approach simple you are training an animal that could be a rabbit, that could be a lion. Okay, that could be a hippopotamus. So in circus, if you see this big, big animals, that could be a big elephant, that could be a very strong lion, tiger or hippopotamus, horse. These kind of animals, they literally listen to whatever master says. Master tells, sit. An elephant will sit. Hippopotamus will sit. Master gives instruction. They will play with ball. They are trained with carrot and stick approach. So in one hand, carrot will be there. In another hand, stick will be there. There is a rabbit. I am asking rabbit to do what I want. Hey, sit. If you are not sitting, stick. Penalty. If you are doing what I am saying, good boy, take this carrot. So these are penalties and rewards. These are penalties and rewards. Even for this uh, hippopotamus kind of big, big, big animals, they will have whatever the animal likes. If it likes meat, they will give meat. If it likes hippopotamus likes uh, mint leaves, pudina. So they'll have a big bunch of mint leaves fresh mint leaves and they are showing the smell to hippopotamus and then they'll give a ball and say play with this play with this and hippopotamus plays and then they'll say good boy ah take this mint leaves it likes if it is not listening then they will punish it now you might say but pavan sir hippopotamus if you are beating with stick it will not feel anything that is the reason they put current in it. electricity so electric shock will be there for it which gives a pain Carrot and stick approach. 
So here to employee, you are, you know, giving a reward and penalty. A reward and penalty. Hey, you are working under me. Achieve this level of sales. I will give you bonus. I will give you performance linked incentive. I will give you promotion. I will give you transfer to the location you want. I will make you manager. I will give you a car. I will give you ticket to Goa. I will give something, a reward. If you do not achieve it, penalty. This is called transactional leadership style. It works in established systems. So proper system and organizational structure is there. Hierarchy is there. Systematically and structurally you are working. This works. In a stabilized environment. Stabilized environment. Stable. Stable. Transformational leadership style is inspirational. Using Cherishma. Leader shares his vision and dream and makes people part of journey. Then people are looking up to the leader and say, yes, we will come with you. We will fight for you. This is transformational leadership style. Turbulent environment. It works. In the introduction stage, transformational leadership works. Growth stage and maturity stage, transactional leadership works. Declining stage, transformational leadership works. And surprisingly, one person can be both. It is not necessary that whole my life, if I am CEO of a company, whole my life I am following transactional, whole my life I am following transformational, not required. In some situations, I can be this. In some situations, I can be this. Actually, it is not based on the leader. It is based on the follower. So if you are an employee working under me, I need to think and understand what works best for you. If you are a person who is not motivated, I will do reward and penalty system. If you are a person who works with passion and heart, probably I will follow transformational style. So here, if you look at the case study, what they are saying, Ramesh, owner of popular brand, Yashpal, his son. So Ramesh preferred use authority in a formal system, defining goals, rewards and punishments. Now you tell me, what is the leadership style of Ramesh? What is the leadership style of Ramesh? But Yashpal, who is also a chartered accountant, young, educated, he feels like this is wrong. Yashpal believed in involving employees, generating enthusiasm, inspire people, get the maximum best out of the people and deliver to the organizational success. He wants to do this. So what is the style of Yashpal? transformational. That is the difference. So Ramesh is a follower of transactional leadership style whereas Eshpal is a follower of transformational leadership style. Do you understand this? So Ramesh follows formalized approach. Setting clear goals. This is the goal you have to achieve. If you achieve, I'll give you this reward. If you do not achieve, this will be penalty. That is what he's telling. Now, this guy, he uses his cherishma and enthusiasm to inspire people, to get best out of them. So they bring excitement, vision, intellectual stimulation, and personal satisfaction. They will share their dreams and visions with you so that you will be excited to work under them. You'll be excited to work. You understand? So shall we go to next question?
Suresh Sinha has been recently appointed as the head of a strategic business unit of a large multi-product company, SBU. He's the head of SBU. Advise Mr. Sinha about the leadership role to be played by him in execution of strategy. This is a pure theoretical question. Though they have put it as a case study, this is actually not a case study. Team building, stay on the top, Okay, those kind of things, that five uh, elements are there no? in ICI study material. So just you need to write that five elements. What is the role of a strategic leader in strategy execution? See, these points, one, two, three, four, five. This numbering is wrong, one, two, three, four, five. Staying on the top. Promoting culture of esprit de corps. Esprit de corps means team building. Team building. Third one is responsiveness, adaptability to change. Fourth one is ethical leadership fifth one is feedback and corrective actions these are five functions five uh, roles of strategic leader in the context of strategy execution so can you read this so who wants to read kavipriya you want to read this yes sir read ma Staying on the top of what is happening, closely monitoring progress, solving out issues, and learning what obstacles lie in the path of good execution. Mm -hmm. Promoting a culture of e-spirit decops that mobilizes and energizes organizational members to execute strategy in a competent fashion and perform at a high level. Keeping the organization responsive to changing conditions, alert for new opportunities, bubbling with innovative ideas, and ahead of rivals in developing competitively valuable competencies and capabilities. Mm -hmm. Exercising ethical leadership and insisting that the company conduct its affairs like a model corporate citizen. Pushing corrective actions to improve strategy execution and overall strategic performance. So now World Cup uh, season this is and also we have seen IPL. So have you seen recently in one of the interviews, Hardik Pandya told what is the difference between the leadership style and culture in uh, Chennai Super Kings and the Mumbai Indians. That was very controversial, but I really appreciate the observation of this guy and how, you know, he communicated it. It is actually beautiful. He said, Mumbai Indians, they want to buy the best of the best talent. Obviously, Mukesh Ambani, no? He wants to buy the best talent. So the best player, they want to buy the best player. They want to be the best. Whereas in Chennai Super Kings, because it is completely given to Dhoni, Srinivasan has completely given free hand to Dhoni right from day one. So Dhoni can decide what he wants. So what they do, you know, they take people, they nurture talent. Dhoni brings best out of any person. For example, you know, maybe you uh, know the story of uh, Suresh Raina, you know the story of uh, Ravindra Jadeja, these kind of people, these are stars. But even, you know, the, the smallest of the kids like uh, Sri Lankan bowlers, what is the name? Tikshana, Patirana, these kind of people, they buy for 5 lakh rupees, 10 lakh rupees. So other, other teams are paying 15 crores, 18 crores, 20 crores to buy bowlers. And CSK, 8 lakhs, 12 lakhs, 18 lakhs. Three bowlers they bought with 22 lakhs. That means peanuts, nothing. And how Dhoni transformed them? That is the difference between transactional leaders and transformational leaders. Dhoni is obviously a transformational leader. Because, you know, the presence of Dhoni, his aura, that, that positive vibe, it brings the best out of the team members. And those who are working under Dhoni, playing under Dhoni, they want to give their best. Isn't it? Because he's so inspirational. Even if he doesn't speak anything also, just you see his photo also, somehow you get the goosebumps. Isn't it? Looking at his photo, you are like, Are yeah. What a human being. So he reached a level. So now he is no more a cricket player. He is a demigod. He reached a stage of demigod. So probably he is enjoying the status of Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi or maybe more than that. 
So there are different leadership styles. Virat Kohli, he is one type of leader. Saurav Ganguly, he is one type of leader. MSD, he is one type of leader. Sachin Tendulkar, he is one type of leader. Unfortunately, Sachin Tendulkar is a very good player, but not a great leader. Okay, but he is highly respected. That is a different story. So when it comes to strategy execution, if you are strategic manager, you have five roles. One, stay on the top. What are the obstacles that come in the path of execution? You need to sort out issues. Second thing is promote culture. Culture, team, team is more important. Always team first, always team first. That culture you need to develop. That has to energize organizational members to execute strategy in a most competent fashion, high level. So this one plus ethical leadership, this one. Okay, now whenever I read this fourth point, no, ethical leadership. Okay, we remember Ratan Tata. So he said, you know, once a question was asked, you are doing business for 150 years. Reliance is doing business for 40 years. Mm -hmm. He has become number one uh, in India and the sixth wealthiest man in the world. You are nowhere in top 10 also. So a journalist asked Ratan Tata, can you believe a journalist asked Ratan Tata, should I consider this to be your inefficiency? What is that bloody question? Should I consider this to be your inefficiency? Do you know what is the answer Ratan Tata told? There is a difference between businessman and an industrialist. Businessman works for money, industrialist works for economic growth. Isn't it? Nice answer. So, you need to have ethical leadership. And also, if you are a strategic leader, always you must take the feedback and you must be ready to correct yourself so that, you know, the strategy execution will be improved. So are we done with this? Next, question number three. So, Anwar wants to read question number three. Anwar, read it, ma. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Hi, Anwar. How, how are you? I am fine, sir. Good. Read. Uh, question number three. Uh, Cadence Limited, uh, a diversified business entity having business and operations across the globe. The company leadership has just changed. Handed over the uh, pedals to his son Aditya Bandhavadayai. Due to his uh, poor health, Aditya uh, is highly educated with uh, an engineering degree from IIT Delhi. However, being very young, he is not clear about his uh, role and their responsibilities. In your view, uh, what are the responsibilities of Aditya Bandhavadayai? as CEO of the company. So if you look at it, this is also a classic, you know, theory question, but put it in a bottle, like, you know, it is giving you an impression that it is a case study question, but it has nothing to do with the answer. This has nothing to do with the answer. So simply they're asking you, what are the responsibilities of CEO of a company, full stop. Your answer is also theoretical. As a strategic leader, he has several responsibilities. One, making strategic decisions, formulating policies, formulating action plans to implement strategic decisions, ensuring effective communication in the organization, managing human capital, managing changes in the organization, creating and sustaining strong corporate culture, sustaining high performance over time. So nothing is related to this particular case study this particular scenario, it is a general question. They're asking you what are the characteristics of, you know, what are the, what is the role of a strategic leader? What is the difference between question number two and question number three? Question number two is about responsibilities in the context of strategy execution. Please be careful. These are responsibilities 
If you do not know, and if you write same answer, you will not get marks. Question number two, what is the role of strategic leader in the context of strategy execution? Question number three, what is the role of CEO of a company? What is the role of strategic leader in general? So this involves strategy formulation also. You look here, formulation, making strategic decisions, decision making. These will not come in previous question. You understand? Then question number four. Anwar, can you read question number four? Anwar? Are you able to unmute yourself? Sandra, can you read, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, read. Um, sir, could you scroll down? No, that is question number four. That's it. Okay. Manu started his telecom business in 2010. Over the next five years, he gradually hired 50 people for various activities, such as to keep his account, administration, sell his products in the market. Create more customers, provide after sale service, coordinate with vendors. Do the organization structure Manoj should implement in his organization and need. So tell me, what organization structure should be applied by Manoj? Centralized? Decentralized? Simple organization structure. Here, functional structure, divisional structure, strategic business unit structure, network structure, our glass structure. These are various structures here. Functional structure, divisional structure, SBU structure, network structure, hourglass structure. If you have a single business, probably functional structure is the best structure. You don't have multiple businesses. You have only one business. So if you have one business, go for functional structure wherein divide work based on functions. Whereas purchases is a function, accounting is a function, sales is a function, marketing is a function, HR is a function, production is a function, legal department is a function. So divide your organization into these kind of departments. So each function will be a different department. This enables specialization of it. This is the advantage of functional structure. Simple, no complications will be there. So, specialization will be promoted. So, in this case, Manos has started a telecom business. Accounts, administration, marketing are the functional areas that are desired in the organizational structure. There is inherent need to have a department for the management of telecom. So, the functional structure is like this. So, there will be there will be chairman, managing director, CEO. Under him, different departments. Telecom operations, accounts, finance is one department. Marketing is one department. Again, in marketing, under marketing, sales is there. After sales service is there. Vendor coordination is there. Admin human resources is one department. Simple. Someone is speaking. Who is that? Anwar, can you read question number five? Uh Yes, sir. Read question number five. Uh, Moonlight Private Limited deals in uh, multiple product and multiple businesses. Mm. Uh, it has its own uh, set of competitors. It seems impractical for, for the company to provide a separate strategic planning uh, treatment to each one of its product or business. As a strategic manager, 
suggest the type of uh, structure best suitable for uh, Moonlight Private Limited and its state its benefits. So when it is said that there are multiple businesses and multiple products. It is always better either to go with the divisional structure or to go with strategic business unit structure. Now try to understand the language. In the question, if they say the company wants to reduce the number of employees but wants to outsource many of the activities possible. The company wants to connect various customers and suppliers. The company wants to be an aggregator. The company wants to wants to centralize their corporate activities in a small corporate hub small corporate hub and act as a broker if these are the phrases used now you tell me what they are speaking about the company wants to reduce the number of employees they want to outsource many activities they want to connect customers and suppliers they want to be an aggregator the company wants to centralize their corporate activities in a small hub and they want to act as a broker. These are the characteristics of network structure. You need to understand the hint. When they use this language, they're asking about network structure. Okay. Each unit must be under separate leadership or separate management. The unit needs separate planning. The unit has separately identifiable competition. Multiple businesses, multiple products. If these are the phrases used, if these are the phrases used, they are speaking about strategic business unit. SBU structure. Each unit must be under separate management. Each unit needs separate planning. The unit has separately identifiable competition. The company is having multiple businesses and multiple products. Then you need to give answer strategic business unit. The company wants to reduce middle level management by substituting manual controls with technology the company wants to implement erp sap etc technology then they are asking about our glass our glass structure okay this is our glass because our glass structure will be like this fine so middle will be small, top level, very thin middle level, broad functional level. Okay, single business, single location, multiple functions. If these are the words used, then they are speaking about what? Functional structure. So, that's all ladies and gentlemen so you understand so when you are reading the question you should understand looking at the words used what model you need to implement okay now look at this multiple products multiple businesses separate strategic planning is required a separate strategic manager, separate strategic, you know, separate competition. So, own set of competitors. Look here, own set of competitors. So, this is S 
BU structure, a strategic business unit structure. So it is advisable for Moonlight Private Limited to follow strategic business unit structure. Moonlight Private Limited has a multi-product, multi-business structure where each of these businesses has its own set of competitors. In the given case, SBU structure would best suit in the suit the interest of the company. SBU is a part of large business organization that is treated separately for strategic management purposes. It is separate part of large business serving product markets with readily identifiable competitors. It is created by adding another level of management in a divisional structure after the divisions have been grouped under the divisional top management authority based on common strategic interests. Some students ask the doubt, Pavan sir, what is the difference between divisional structure and SBA? What is the difference between divisional structure and SPO? Okay. Now, if you look at Reliance Industries, if you look at Reliance Industries, Reliance has, you know, their uh, primary top-notch number one business is petrochemicals. Reliance first and foremost, the biggest segment is petrochemicals. Then they are into textiles, then they are into telecom. Correct. Geo. Okay. They are into so many things. I'm not saying they are into only these three things. They are into so many things. But these are their big, big divisions. Okay. And then comes retail. Then comes Reliance Jewelry. What not? They are into everything. Isn't it? Now, this is one division for you. Division one. This is division 2, this is division 3, this is division 4, this is division 5. Okay, but in retail, again, there can be 4 SBUs or 10 SBUs, 20 SBUs, 2 SBUs. Oh, sir, how should I identify a strategic business unit? Simple. How to identify a strategic business unit? What is your strategic or economic objective what is your target what is your target say for example in reliance retail or in itc retail you are manufacturing soaps you are manufacturing shampoos you are manufacturing face creams okay you are manufacturing deodorants but in this there can be economy products. There can be premium products. There can be luxury products. There can be a soap which is 20 rupees. There can be a soap which is 200 rupees. There can be a shampoo which is 10 rupees. There can be a shampoo which is 200 rupees. There can be a product which is targeting, you know, the lower uh, middle class or the poor people. And there can be the same product which is targeted for uh, top elite class. Especially you look at companies like Unilever. Unilever, how many soaps they manufacture? You go to a supermarket and in the soaps rack or the shampoos rack, 80% of the products belong to one company only. If you look at Unilever, how many products they have? You name it Rexona, Lux, Liril, Love, Lifeboy, everything belongs to one company. But why are they having different products? Different products for different target customers. Isn't it? Isn't it? Different products for different... So, so, step one, you divide your organization based on divisions. Step one, divide organization based on, based on, you know, uh, business lines. These will become divisions. A division can be a geographical area. A division can be a business. For example, if you look at ICI, how ICI is, you know, what type of divisions are there in ICI? SIRC, NIRC, WIRC. Isn't it? So, ICI divided their businesses based on geography. That is typical style of government organization. 
you go to lic you go to sbi you go to indian railways they will divide south division north division like that it will be it is typical government office postal services lic okay or indian railways okay icai they have this geography each geography is one division for them corporate if you go to corporate each business iec agri division itc tobacco division itc hotel division itc paper division so corporates typically are based on business line government based on geography whether you categorize your business into different divisions based on geography or based on customer sometimes you know domestic export that also can be two divisions in your company two divisions are there domestic sales exports okay haldiram kind of company haldiram you go to london you'll see haldiram you go to new york you see haldiram you go to any country in europe you'll see in many places haldiram so in india also everywhere it is there so probably they might they are not having this but i am telling you just as a hypothetical example haldirams can have two divisions domestic sales foreign sales so once you categorize step 1 divide organization based on uh, business lines it becomes divisional structure step 2 in each division there can be multiple strategic business units for example look at uh, tata motors look at tata motors okay so they are manufacturing cars so what are all cars tata motors has can you give me some examples guys some examples of tata motors tata sumo tata indica tata indigo tata nano any other example there are so many tata cars Nexon, I don't know. You told I wrote. Nexon, that is Maruti or Tata, I don't know. You said I have written. Someone told I wrote. So, like this, there are so many cars, isn't it? And Tata Motors owns JLR also, Jaguar Land Rover. So, here you have Jaguar, Land Rover, Range Rover. So, do you think the way how you plan for a nano car and how you plan for a Jaguar car is same? That is also your company only. That is also your group only. Your subsidiary company. JLR is subsidiary company of Tata Motors. So, can you plan nano and Jaguar in same way? Do you think nano and Jaguar target customers are same? Do you think Nano and Jaguar have same competitors? They have different competitors. Planning should be different. Target customers are separate. Management approach should be different. Then they should be in two different SBUs. So, under Jaguar Land Rover, there can be two strategic business units. Under Tata Motors, there can be four strategic business units. So, first you make it as a separate division. Under each division, there can be many SBUs. Because maybe, who knows, Nano, you will prefer to uh, apply cost leadership strategy and Jaguar, you prefer to apply differentiation strategy. And here for Sumo, you apply uh, value for money strategy and for Nexon, you apply differentiation strategy. This is one level of target customers whose uh, income group is, say, for example, 6 lakhs per annum. And this is another target customer whose income group is 25 lakhs per annum. This you want people from uh, rural areas to buy. This you want people from urban areas to buy. So there will be separate strategic business units. For example, if you look at, uh, I don't know whether you know these things or no, in ICICI Bank and in Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, you have uh, current accounts, right? So we call it CASA. What is CASA? Current account savings account. In banks, CASA means current account savings account. But for uh, individuals, CASA is different and task is different. Task, they call it task. 
trusts, associations, societies, charitable institutes. That is called task. For task, tasa, there will be different thing because it is separate SBU. So in ICICI Bank, say for example, in ICICI, uh, in uh, Hyderabad, in Khairtabad, if there is a branch, there will be two people dealing with CASA. One is CASA for individuals, one is TAS. So this is basically direct customer. This is business to business type of. Here your customer is an individual. Here your customer is a trust, a school, a hospital, a municipality, a cantonment board. That can be a separate uh, SBU. You cannot say all savings account one. No, savings account also. For individual, savings account is a separate SBU. For task, you know, salary accounts of employees is a separate SBU. You understand my point? That is what they are saying here. Very large organizations, particularly those running into several products or operating at distant geographical locations that are extremely diverse. So, oh, my God. There should be two separate strategic business units. You give discounts and coupon code to customer in one country, they might appreciate you. Sir, sir, discount coupon and all. Sir, any discount, please. In some countries, if you give discount to coupon, no? customer feels insulted. So not that they are rich. They are normal economy class only. But if you give discount, they feel insulted. They will not come to your company, your shop again. Sometimes when you give coupon, they tell, Pavan, that guy offered me coupon, intimidating me to buy what he wants me to buy. I will buy what I want to buy, no? So I want to buy one shampoo. He said, hey, on this shampoo, 20% discount is there. Buy. Why will I buy? Simply because you are giving 20% discount, will I buy that shampoo? No, I will buy whatever I want. So extremely diverse people. People in one country behave in one way. People in another country behave completely in a different way. In India itself, there are people, you know, who behave differently. State to state, there is difference. District to district, there can be difference. Street to street, there can be difference. In one house, there are four different madness people. So, if there are extremely diverse people, then each country, each geography should be separate SBO. Okay. So, geographical locations that are extre ex extremely diverse in terms of environmental factors can be better managed by creating strategic business units just as is the case of Moonlight Private Limited. SBU structure becomes imperative in an organization with increase in number, size and diversity and they have given benefits. What are the benefits of SBU they have given? This is again normal question. Theory. No connection with this case study. And then there is one last question. Who wants to read? Sandra, do you want to read this question? Yes, sir. Tanya Private Limited is an automobile company. For the past few years, it has been observed that the progress of the company has become stagnant. When scrutinized, it was found that the planning department was performing fairly well. But the plans could not be implemented due to improper use of resources, undesirable tendencies of workers, and non conformance to norms and standards. You are hired as a strategic manager, suggests elements of process of control to overcome the problem. Excellent. This, this can be the situation in 90% of companies. And I tell you, my dear friend, I tell you, take my word, this is the situation of every student before exams. Pavan sir, planning wise, I think I have done fairly well, Pavan sir. When I look at plan on the paper, it is like very practical, realistic, reasonable. But when it comes to implementation, I don't know why I am unable to implement it, Pavan sir. Whether it is a company or organization or a student. My dear friend, do you know what is the problem? 
do you know what is the problem control 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 so basically unless you have the discipline to implement the plan plan can never be implemented so here you need to understand it like this a plan without implementation is a gun without bullet ta -dan, ta -dan, ta -dan. so plan is very good pavan sir implementation is very poor pavan sir so kya karu mai mar jaau what should i do should i die Okay, now tell me in the chat box, how many of you are suffering with this? Good study plan is there, but I am unable to stick to the plan. I am unable to read according to the plan. Plan is well. I, I have a plan. It is not that I am directionless. I know what to do, but I am unable to do it on daily basis. Now tell me, how many of you are having it? Me, me, me. Look at the chat box. Me, me, me. Everybody is telling. Do you know what is the problem? Control, discipline, discipline, discipline. Pavan sir, I want to get up early morning, but I am unable to. I want to sit and study, but I am unable to. I am easily getting distracted. You look here. Improper use of resources. Oh my God. Undesirable tendencies. Now student will ask, Pavan sir, do you think ICI framed this question looking at my shamelessness? Possible? I don't know. Improper use of resources. Undesirable tendency. Non-conformance to norms and standards. Basically, they are saying that employees are shameless. But you cannot tell. If you tell employees are shameless, they will put one red flag, black flag, green flag, and they will pull management onto the roads. But basically, they are not using resources properly. What to do? There is something called, there is something called, KPI, Key Performance Indicator. So, this is nothing but setting standards, measuring actual progress against these standards. What is the deviation and what is the reason for deviation? Taking Corrective actions. If you know the whole process, the whole process, all these steps put together is called controls. Controls. Control is a basic managerial activity wherein you see a person or a process. A person or a process. Are they working as per the predetermined path? Are they working as per the standard? Are they working as per the, you know, organizational expectation? I want this process to work like this. I want this employee to work like this. I want this resource to be implemented like this. So are they deviating? Are they deviating? Or are they achieving, you know, their purpose? If they are deviating, what to do? It is to be controlled. You look at any movie which is sports based. You look at any movie which is war based. Any sports movie, any war based movie, there is something which is distracting and then comes a strategic leader that could be Shah Rukh Khan, that could be Prabhas or that could be, you know, anyone. They try to bring the human action, the behavior which is, you know, not expected of the particular person, they bring that to organizational goal. So one individual will be there with a lot of talent, 
but no control they will not listen to people isn't it every movie is based on this only there are players who are capable but individually they are capable not team players culturally ethically not correct discipline wise not correct so the role of the strategic leader the role of the coach the role of the strategic manager in this particular company the role of the mentor is to bring the behavior of all individuals which are deviated towards you know organizational achieving organizational goal this is what we call control controls are to be imposed watch check the india watch the coach carter watch any sports based movie any sports based movie this is what it is isn't it now the process of controls they have the following elements objectives of business system which could be operationalized into measurable and controllable standards that is what i said set to the standards set to the standards measurable controllable standards then mechanism for monitoring and measuring the performance that is what i said key performance indicator key performance indicator for a student can be how many hours i read today on a on a given day how many hours i read how many pages i read in a given hour okay how much do i remember and retain if you look at it if you look at it i am covering quantitative and qualitative indicator quantity one and two are quantity three is quality if you follow these kind of things obviously you will achieve a mechanism for comparing the actuals with standards for de detecting deviations and, and standards for learning new insights so if if something is wrong what did i learn from my yesterday's mistake so you may commit mistake no problem committing mistakes is allowed but are you learning anything from it or you are just shameless i failed in the exam doesn't matter i failed in life doesn't matter i failed in business doesn't matter i failed in relationship doesn't matter i failed in one aspect of life doesn't matter it's okay i failed in one exam one attempt okay no problem but what did you learn to make it better otherwise next attempt or next uh, you know time also your result will be same a mechanism for feedback corrective and adaptive information and instructions to the system for effecting the desired changes to set right the system to keep it on the course this is called a control isn't it isn't it quite relevant for a student so if if you are a student who is not having control or who is uh, having you know uh, difficulty in implementing the plans because you are not yes. disciplined this answer is a slap on the face chalo anyway i don't want to be more controversial okay so this is what it is so with this we have completed fifth chapter also okay any doubts in this